are you ready to hang with your digital besties? What Day Is It? is a podcast covering every girl problem, life struggle, and biz reality out there. So pour yourself a glass of wine and get ready to laugh, relate, and celebrate not having it all together. I don't want to see any like photoshopped butts. I don't want to see like, like I actually want to see like cellulite and stretch marks because ultimately I'm selling to women and women have these things. And I think, you know, even though there's this perception that like a perfect image will sell better, I just kind of see it as like the more real it is, the more perfect it is. Um, And I think that just like plays a part in our messaging and how we talk to people. Welcome back, friendships. It's a new day, a new week, still 2020, but you know, last episode of the year. So we're just going to kick it right off. But I am Bailey Stanworth. I am the founder of Play Digital and one half of this podcast. And I think Jackie and I are like on the same level of being like eyes open, but not really like mentally alert (laughs) i'm laughing because like even though you're trying to force your voice to be like upbeat and excited to be here i can hear it in the background that you're like struggling you're like what's up you're like trying so hard and i feel that so deeply in my soul today i don't know what it is it's just like well it's like sometimes when we do our intros and i have to edit and i listen back i'm like we sound so lame and tired and just like zombies so you know what i am trying to bring the oh shit what's the word life the, in the excitement no, the, the jazz I was gonna say, no there's all of the above um but there's a specific word and those are none of them it's i was gonna say deflection but that's not it it's like the inflection in your voice i don't know we'll go we'll roll with it because that's what day is it yeah. but I feel that. So, I mean, it's just a realness. It's life. If you guys are listening and we sound like we are trying to be alert and upbeat, we are. We fully are. And I am Jackie Wright, other half of this dysfunctional podcast. If you're tuning in for the very first time, you just have to deal with me and the lovely Bailey Stanworth for a few minutes. We're back and we're better post Christmas. Not really better. I shouldn't have said that. I was going to say, are we better? Why are you saying that? It's just like after. <laughs> Christmas there's always just this lull period until New Year's right like everyone goes through it so that's what we're in right now we're in the lull I feel like 2020 has been the lull Mm -hmm. like I think the whole wasn't there memes about that how 2020 felt like that week between Christmas and New Year's because I don't know now we're in it so it's just something else but okay I want to switch it up then this week because my shower thought is related to the New Year so can we do it first sure why not it's the thoughts it's the it's thoughts the thoughts it's the thoughts, it's the thoughts <laughs> we have we have in, in the, the shower <laughs> shower thought okay i wanted to add that in the end. <laughs> um this is this one made me chuckle okay 2021 might be the first year that people don't accidentally put the wrong year when writing dates in January because everyone is so fucking done with 2020. Everyone is going to be on alert that it's a new year to make shit happen. And so no one is going to fuck up their dates. There will be some people, but the majority of people compared to last year, it will be very, very small. It'll be if they're having an off day, but everyone knows that in what's the date today? three days it'll be 2021 everyone knows that and everyone's gonna be aware okay that's thanks for coming to my ted talk (laughs) honestly i've actually subconsciously i was writing in my gratitude journal and i accidentally the other day wrote 2021 oh so you're manifesting a good year it started early for me i'm just like done with this shit so i'm already writing it but also i was on um Oh, what was I on? I think I was on Hey You, and there was this show, and it was a brand new show. No, I was on Crave. It was Crave, and it's the show you're on, or which is great. If you guys like thrillers, it's a great show. But I was looking at it, and it said 2010, and I was just like, mm, everybody just doesn't want to admit that 
they have anything to do with 2020. So. Wait, but Beasley's the show made in 2010. Did it air in 2010? Is it an old show? No, it just it just came out. Okay. It's only on like episode three. It's a brand new show. Okay, I thought promise. I was, I was like, maybe it was just recorded in 20, or filmed in. 2010. No, no, completely promise. Yeah, no one wants anything to do with 2020. I well. It's a bittersweet year. Obviously, there's some great memories within it, but damn, I just want it to be gone. I'm hopeful that 2021 will be really great for everyone. And, you know, like there's only there's only up from here. And I hope we have like a time period like the roaring 20s where once it's safe, we can all live our best lives and go dancing and hanging out with friends like everyone's just gonna have a deeper appreciation for those moments so i'm hopeful that it'll be a really cool year i never had like a party girl phase but like i'm worried that's gonna happen to me at like 33 (laughs) bailey's party girl phase is like extended over 10 years she has like ups and downs throughout the year i really do you do um also you know what it's called consistency i don't want to burn out so like it ebbs and it flows just a little reminder that if you guys are new to this podcast bailey didn't even stay up till her birthday on her birthday when we were with a group of friends in Kelowna in the summer because i was hammered exactly it was 11 p.m you guys and all of us were still drinking we had like a bottle of tequila we were passing around okay i'd like to clarify something not everyone was up i was not the first person to go to bed i also was not the last who was the first I was somewhere in the middle I'm pretty sure all the girls were in her tent, Bailey, and you were the first person to go to bed. No, there was someone in my tent. It was either Taylor or Nicole. Nicole was up passing someone the was tequila in my bottle tent. to me, so it was not Nicole. Okay, then it was it was Taylor. It doesn't seem like Taylor. It doesn't seem like Taylor. But I'm positive. I don't Anyways, know. Anyways, guys, she wouldn't even stay up for an hour till her birthday. Like, this girl, you are so... Uh, I can't. I can't. Whatever. I do want to add, like, a little... A little something in here today so bailey made me this really cute jar and she might tell me to stop right now because i know she's gifting this to other people are you gonna pull one out i want to read one so uh, i actually have not gifted one single person how dare you this gift how dare you i've been waiting <laughs> but it, it's it's fine you know we'll find out which friends listen to the podcast true okay so <laughs> bailey made me this really cute jar of a bunch of notes of little like funny inspirational like um, what are they called? Affirmations. Or like mantras, like stuff like that. Um, she used orange paper because she knows that's my vibe. And it's really cute. And so I've been pulling one out every single day and they're really funny. So I'm going to read one for you guys. And hopefully it's a funny one, not a super inspirational one today. It's probably not going to. I feel like you got all the funny ones already. I feel like they were just sitting on the Did top. Did you put them on the top? No, I just, I honestly, I wrote them all. <laughs> and then I was having trouble getting them into the thing. So I like threw them on the floor and I like squished them into a ball and shoved them in the jar. So um i read this one but it's funny so i'm gonna read it again i don't i didn't put the ones i read back in maybe jordan did how dare he he ruined it i was gonna say i don't think i wrote it twice but um it says i hope you make it to the bath olympics one day (laughs) i definitely didn't write that one twice that's you can't recycle it pull a new one out i'll go to the bottom i'll post a no i won't post a picture you gotta straighten that guy out. i'm just gonna not post a picture guys because i don't want to ruin it if Bailey's other friends haven't received them yet but (laughs) this one's funny (laughs) it says thanks for forgiving me when I drowned your laptop (laughs) how podcast perfect (laughs) literally the podcast world new there's one in there that I can't wait for you to get I can't wait either but yeah super cute I pull the pull one out every day and sometimes it's like a little message I need to hear today and sometimes it just like puts a smile on my face so Okay, well, don't do it every day. I didn't do 365 of them. There's probably like 70. So oh, that's still a lot. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot. My fucking wrist hurt. I feel like the, I want to read them all, you know? Yeah, well, I had carpal tunnel, so I hope you appreciate it. Yeah, that. if you did this for multiple friends, your poor wrist, your, that is a, no, that's why I haven't done them yet because I know the pain of doing one <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to inflict that upon myself again. I don't know if I love my friends that it's much. It's a daunting task. I respect <laughs> it. Okay, let's jump into our cute but psycho. You go first. Kick it off. I hope you have something juicy and good for me. Um, 
Okay, well, my cute, I think a lot of people probably already know if you follow me, but I spent the week of Christmas with my 95-year-old grandma. I talked about it on the pod because I was quarantining for two weeks, but it was fun. Um, Just made a lot of memories, spent some quality time with her, and I could just tell it meant so much to her. It was really sad leaving her, though, because I could tell that, like, obviously she got kind of used to having someone there, and then I felt, like, guilty and stuff, but... It is what it is. Like, that's life. And I know that so many people are kind of dealing with some kind of guilt around family and stuff. So, yeah, I'm just really grateful I had that time with her and, like, to make those memories. And she, though, I let me tell you, I thought that I would be the one to instigate drinking. She is a little instigator. I love that. That senior citizen. She, first question when I showed up to her house, not even kidding you, first question where's your wine? Because I didn't bring any. I was like, what? She's like, where's your wine? And then around every day at like three o'clock, well, you know, we could have a glass of wine. Should I pass the torch over as the pusher to your grandma? And I will happily pass that torch to her, honestly. And then also we were having dinner at the last night I was there and I poured her a very full glass of wine. Um, and she is so cute. She sits with her little TV tray and we ordered Chinese food cause she wanted that. So I put her, what did you order? She's actually, I found like a really cool place that had like, oh, cool. um, sweet and sour tofu and like garlic tofu. So we did like a whole vegetarian vegan dinner and then she's sitting with her TV tray and I like go to move the TV tray in and I guess I hit it on the carpet and her glass of <gasps> wine just goes whoosh, like right into her face. <gasps> Was it red wine? Red wine. No. And it was full. It was full. And I just, we both started cracking up because she's just doused in red <laughs> wine. And I was just like, she goes, well, that was a waste of wine. And then I, wait, is this your psycho? <laughs> no, just a funny story. Red wine. Did yeah. it get on her couch? Um, no, actually, surprisingly, it got, she was just sitting on a chair and it was like a dark brown chair. So you wouldn't really see it anyways. Thank God. But I swear the whole glass went on her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I have, a, I have a picture, actually, we can post. Oh, yay. I can't wait. You, you stopped. You are like, stop. Um, I need to take a picture right now for the podcast. Even though you're soaked in red wine. Wait. Um. Okay, and then my psycho. So this happened a couple weeks ago, but I didn't... I don't think my dad really listens to the podcast, but it involved his Christmas gift, so I didn't want to tell it. And I think Jackie already knows this because I think I sent a Snapchat. But I got him one of those tushy bidets for Christmas. Oh, my God. And so I just, I see it on social. I got the ads, the targeting worked, like good job, Tushy. And I did a thing on my story. I was like, tell me if you guys have this, if it's amazing. And the feedback was like 10 out of 10 every single time, like sometimes higher. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get this from my dad. And so I didn't Google it or like click the link in bio. I just assumed the domain was Tushy.com. You guys, I was very wrong. Do not go to tushy.com. Or or go check it out so you could get the same effect as Bailey. It's a very graphic site. um, And I'm just going to say the landing page image was aggressive. Like, I just... I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not linking this with the friendships. I will not be linking. No, this. don't 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 link it. No. Um, but like, I don't know. You land on like a porn site, but and car- I get there's always visuals. But it's cartoon, right? No, no, oh. no, no, no. I don't remember. That's probably for the best. I, I remember like something very graphic. <laughs> it was just like a close frame of. The most graphic detail you could get. A penis going in a vagina. Like literally. Literally. Suction cupped. Just zoomed in <laughs> on that proximity. So good. So so good, but so bad. Like I just thought I was trying to do a nice thing for my dad and get him a gift. And that's what the universe gave me. So did he like his bidet? He hasn't tried it yet because it's sitting here. It got delivered after I left to go see with my grandma's. So I told him what I got yeah. him and he started laughing and said he was excited. But you should send him a link to Toshi.com. I told him I told him the story, but um mm, so yeah. Good. So good friendships. If you're feeling spicy today, go look at that 
that domain and have a good lol maybe not if you're at work listening to this with headphones and don't pull up the landing page i'm giving you a psa tushy.com sponsor us we're giving you um some great great placement right by now. their landing page i'm not sure i want to be sponsored by them i didn't do any digging so i'm just wondering no we didn't we we exited out of that pretty quick after you sent the snap i'm sure mm-hmm. um Okay, my cute but psycho. Um, my cute is that I was just a lovely little gem this Christmas and baked and made all of my entire gifts. And I know if you guys listened to the podcast before, you know that I did some canning with my Nana a few months ago in preparation for Christmas, but also just to learn about canning so I can do it. Um, just a generational, like, passing it down to me thing I really wanted to learn. But I also chose to bake other stuff just on top of that because it was really lame just giving people a bunch of cans. So super cute and you know, took me a whole day, was rather annoying because Bailey's a vegan, so you can only imagine I have to use vegan ingredients, um, and Jordan's dad is allergic to nuts, and both the recipes I was doing involved nuts, so I had to make a separate batch for the vegan, a separate batch for the nut allergy, and there was one other thing that was like a restriction, but I can't really remember. But, oh, well, I had to make two, I made two things. So I had to make two separate batches of vegan and a separate batch for a nut allergy. It was just very, very annoying. And I told Bailey it's super annoying that she chose to be vegan because how dare she. So I know that a lot of love and heartfeltness went into my baking. It was made, it was made with hate, actually. <laughs> Resentment and hate. <laughs> Loathing. <laughs> But yeah, I was pretty proud of myself and like I wrapped them all cute, which Bailey doesn't have her gift yet because I'm that bitch that doesn't give everyone their presents for Christmas. But I actually still have like eight gifts under my tree for my friends. And that's also because we are not supposed to see people right now. So they are safe here. But yeah, go me. I mean, is this what 24 is? Am I going to have to bake now every year because I set the bar to this? And so now next year I have to bake. Um... I don't know. It depends if it's good and if your friends want more. Shit. Shit. <laughs> um, and then my psycho. Hmm. I'm trying to decide which one I should go with. I'll go with this one because it's a little more relevant to the past Christmas I just had, which Bailey knows a little bit about. And if you listen to last week's episode, I said that my family doesn't really drink a lot on Christmas. Well, 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 boy, was she wrong. She was wrong. (laughs) Um, So I went to Christmas Eve and we all were drinking, like, you know, a decent amount. I was definitely drunk. Was I blackout? No. Who was blackout? Jordan Haas, my boyfriend. Are we surprised? No. No. (laughs) He was mm, yelling at my dad. (laughs) yelling at my dad he was playing my dad in a game of chess and telling my dad he's gonna whoop his ass and saying you're going down first off who plays chess when you're drunk i don't know i love chess i played it on my phone with my sister's boyfriend at the same time it's a good time it's actually really fun if you know how to play but jordan took his queen which is a key player in the first like five moves and so jordan thought he had it in the bag and so he was chirping my dad the entire game the entire game and he ended up losing and when i realized like we need to go is when jordan was walking around with the texas mickey of gray goose saying we're doing shots to my dad and i was like jordan put the bottle down you are way too drunk right now it, we are leaving like it's gonna take a turn for the worse here i know jordan he has like a quick window of like good 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 and then it's just downhill so then we get to my mom's house where we were sleeping and jordan proceeds to it's three in the morning proceeds to whisper to my mom while she's sleeping good night sue good good night sue have a good sleep sue good night good night like seven times before i like force him to go in the bed and go to bed he then gets up and says, I'm going to throw up. And I'm like, oh, cool. Love that for you. Okay, go to the bathroom. He pukes, gets everything out of his system, goes to bed, wakes up. He's still drunk. Disastrous on Christmas Day. Apparently slept all day and recovered. And yeah, I mean, I guess 
I can not say next year that my family doesn't drink a lot on Christmas. Thanks to my boyfriend. <laughs> we'll leave it to Jordan. Always. Always. Um, okay. Speaking of chess, though, have you seen The Queen's Gambit? Yeah. That's kind of why I started playing again. I, like, will play on my phone. They say, like, chess sales went up so much. Which I I bet they have. Did you... I've, le- I've known how to play chess from when I was, like, a young kid. My dad used to play with his dad and then took his really nice chess set. And so we've been... Me and my sister used to play all the time just for fun. And it's like riding a bike. So as soon as you pick it up, you just remember how to play exactly again. Yeah, I haven't... I played it when I was younger. I haven't played it in so long. Um... But, like, not a pro- protege. Shocker. Um, and I don't know a lot of, like, the crazy terminology. I just know, basically, the um, the pieces and, like, how they work. Yeah, and that's me essentially, too. like, my knowledge. I don't but... know any game board strategy, like the Queen's Gambit. No. Which, the Queen's Gambit, it's a good show. You guys should watch it. But, no. We should play one time, Bailey, on, on our phones. Smack talk each other? I'll whoop your ass. <laughs> <laughs> probably uh <laughs> okay friends well we already did our shower thought so i guess we're just going right into the episode now but we have alexa Suter, who is the founder of hoo-ha which is if you haven't heard of it it's a local brand here to vancouver it's women's underwear and she's really disrupted the feminine health industry so it's a really interesting conversation um i've known alexa for years which we kind of talk about but i just love what she's doing I think it's always really cool to see a disruptive brand and so we kind of dive into all of that plus a bit about her history with skinny shaming which I think is really interesting because we've talked about the opposite on the podcast and we always love to include like different schools of thought so it was yeah it's it's a very interesting conversation yeah and I loved oh that was the first time meeting her but I did work with hoo-ha through bailey through play and i can say that their underwear is amazing so soft and that was my first time meeting alexa and i i love her outlook on telling her story and you guys will hear that like she just keeps it super 100 percent real and sometimes you don't really find that in this industry so just the way she talks and presents herself I really resonated with and I'm excited for you guys to hear all about it like Bailey said local woman-owned and it's also sustainable which is all things we stand for over here at what day is it so enjoy the episode friendships and let us know what you think and I'm sorry if your Alexa is now going off (laughs) hey Alexa hey Alexa turn up what day is it podcast Hey, Alexa, subscribe me to What Day Is It podcast. Hey, Alexa, text my dad and say subscribe to What Day Is It podcast. Hey, Alexa, text my mom to subscribe to What Day Is It podcast. Okay, we're done. (laughs) Okay, friendships. So excited for today's guest because her and I actually go like way back. And when I say way back, I mean like five years old. So we were just talking about how I'm going to have to find like some embarrassing photos of us. But um, we have Alexa Suter here from Hoo Ha, which so excited. It is so cool to see what she has been doing over, I don't even want to say how many years, because that's going to make me feel old. Um, but her and I are in the boat together. We're the same age. So welcome. Thank you for being here. So excited. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be chatting. It's a mini reunion here. I'm just the odd one out hosting your guys' reunion over here. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> you can be our Andy Cohen. It's fine. Honestly, not mad about that. (laughs) Not mad at all. Um, Alexa, can you just give us all the deets and background on yourself and who you are, where you grew up and what you do, all the fun stuff? Yeah, um, I grew up in Langley, which Bailey knows because we, like she just said, we went to school together. Um, I'm the daughter of an entrepreneur. Um, So I guess that kind of speaks to my story. Um, I have a crazy family. It's very extended and broken and awesome and chaotic, but all of the things. Uh, college dropout. Uh, I don't know. How, how deep should I go here? <laughs> as deep as you want. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much where, we, where I can start with it. I mean, I'm sure we'll, we'll get into it more. We definitely will. Um, but I'm so curious, what is a day in the life like for you? I mean, obviously quarantine limit it, limits it a bit, but what is it like for you? Yeah. You know, this is like a really funny question because it's like, (laughs) I have like, I have a thing about this. So like what I've realized for myself, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs kind of can relate to this is that I don't really like 
a day in the life of. I don't really like like definitives and like always and nevers and like nine to five or like 40 hour work week or like have to be in the office at X time. So I would say like a day in the life of doesn't really exist. And I try to just like what I've discovered with my own like rebelliousness against, you know, schedules and meetings and like definitives is that like the more freedom I can give myself, the better off I am. And like the more consistent I actually am. So instead of being like, okay, I'm going to do like nine to five every day, you know, be in the office. um, I'll just be like, well, I can just do whatever I want you know, and then I'm actually more consistent and I'll actually probably be in the office nine to five, but only if I like, don't force myself to be. So, I mean, every day is different. I try to just give myself freedom, but I'm in the office that you can see right now um, in the background here, like pretty much every day, Monday to Friday, try to take weekends off. I'm the same way because I used to be like such a black or white type person and I would like be okay I have to do this I have to do that and I was like I have no balance in my life and as soon as I kind of like let go of that expectation I put on myself like no one else was putting it on me you just feel lighter and more productive and just it's a game changer yeah because you know like where your motivations lie Mm-hmm. You know that like you're doing things because you want to and not because you have to. And then you bring so much more energy to it rather than just like being like, because some days I'll be like, no, like I don't want to work today. And then I'll like be not working. I'll be like, wait, like, no, I do want to work. I just don't want to feel like I have to, you know? hundred percent. Was there like a pivotal moment where that changed for you? Um, I've kind of always been like a bit like, doing my own thing kind of on my own time. I've never really had like a full-time job or anything. So I think I always like from a young age kind of knew that I needed to like create a life for myself that really had a lot of freedom and had a lot of flexibility because I think for so long, I just felt like there's no way anyone's going to employ me. Like I'm just like emotionally sporadic. I have days where I just like don't want to do anything. I'm like, I can be quite lazy. So I was like, I just, I just need to kind of create my own thing. Um, but I think I've just discovered and like gotten better with age that like, Hey, if I just like, don't make myself do anything, then I'm actually so much more productive. We always ask our guests this next question and it always kind of stumps them, but we love doing that. Um, so what is something you do every day that you would guess most people don't do? Yeah. I like read through your questions. I was (laughs) thinking about that. I'm like, fuck, I don't know. (laughs) It's a hard one. (laughs) That's a tough one. Um, I don't know. I think like the most honest answer is that like, I don't do, I don't do anything every day, (laughs) you know, like other than like breathe and like, you know, utter a few words, but I do, I can say that like, I do drink a lot more water than I think most people do. I am like perpetually thirsty and I drink, I probably drink like at least like four to five liters of water a day. Yeah. I have like, look at this. This is my bottle. That That was my next question. I'm like, what bottle are you using? Cause we were talking about water bottles this morning. (laughs) Oh really? Yeah. This is from Ikea and it's like a one, it's a one liter glass bottle. And I think it's the bottle that actually inspired me to drink more. Cause you can just like measure it so easy. But my sister always makes fun of me. She's like, I'm pretty sure you have diabetes. Like you're just, this is not okay. Like <laughs> you need to get checked out. Uh, Wait, do you, how many times a day do you pee? Cause that I was drink, my next question. Yeah. <laughs> this, this is my issue. It's like, I yeah. love drinking water. I love staying hydrated. I love drinking like three liters a day, but then that equates to at least 20 pees a day. Oh yeah. At least. <laughs> I'm at least there. You definitely like don't want to do a road trip with me. I'm like no. at least once an hour for sure. Okay. Okay. So we're not alone. <laughs> yeah, we're not alone. <laughs> so I know you're not big on like the always or nevers, but do you have a daily ritual or like a habit that you kind of always come back to, especially on those days where it's like a shit show and you just need to ground yourself? Yeah. Journaling is pretty big for me. Um, you know, I go through periods where sometimes I'm better and more consistent with it than others. Lately, like over the past couple of weeks, I actually hacked my morning. So like my my mornings are completely different now, which I'm really excited to share with people because it's been super game changing. Wait, and all, that. yeah, all, okay. All I did was I took my phone at night and instead of putting it next to my bed on the nightstand, I put it like 10 feet away from my bed, like on the coffee table that we have in our bedroom. And it, number one, that forces me to like get out of bed to turn my alarm off. So I'm already up. So I'm much less likely to like sleep through my alarm and like keep hitting snooze although I did do that this morning because I had like 
two glasses of wine last night. It's, it's, about, balance. <laughs> yeah. it's about balance. It's about balance. It's about balance. But um, it's been great because then I'm like, I have a moment to be like, I'm not going to hop on my email right away. Like, I'm not going to look at Instagram. I'm not going to open Shopify. And so instead, I just start my mornings with like some journaling. I've been doing um, Spanish lessons on Duolingo every morning because I want to learn a second language. Wait, you mean Mr. Maltby didn't teach you anything? Nothing. (laughs) This is where I turn into Andy Cohen and I ask, who is Mr. Maltby? He was the weirdest fucking Spanish teacher in the world. He would swim on desks. Like, I don't understand what he's trying to teach us. I never had him. I never took Spanish. I was like, I took German for some reason. It makes sense because I feel like you wouldn't want to learn Spanish if you had him, it seems like, from what Bailey's saying. (laughs) I wish I took Spanish. Do you you speak a second language? Like, did you pick something up over the ages? No? I can do, like, sentences of Spanish, but not anything fluent. Mm. I was, like, studying in London for a bit. I took, like, a two-month course, and every single person in the class had at least two languages. And I was the only one who had one language. I'm like, God, that's so Canadian of me or like Mm -hmm. (laughs) North American. (laughs) I would love Um, to be bilingual too. Yeah. You know, my dad speaks Swiss German and I'm like, why didn't you, why didn't you work a little harder and like teach your kids (laughs) a second language? Okay. So you do your Spanish lesson and then what do you do after that? Um, So I do my Spanish lesson. I try to do some journaling this morning. I was like journaling and, um, I ended up writing out like a five-year plan for who I like rewriting it because I've written it like a hundred times. Um, but I just like ultimately just take a chunk of time, like an hour for myself before I dive into like all the chaos of the day. Cause I just find that like, no matter what, it's either going to be like stress or disappointment waiting for me, <laughs> whether it's like I wake up and I open Shopify and there's like zero sales and I'm like, no, or it's like, I open my email and there's like a thousand tasks and I'm just like, Oh my God, like like, it's just too much. It's just, I've just realized it's really not the ideal way to start your morning. You just end up in a reactive state and it just fucks with your head and you just end up in a bad mood. I used to do that all the time. Exactly. (laughs) Okay. Well, our listeners might be listening right now and being like, what the heck is hoo-ha? So we are going to dive into that. So can you take us back to the very start of hoo-ha um, you've really disrupted the market of women's underwear. So where did that come from? What is hoo-ha? Give us all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, so first I like, I like to just mention that like founder stories, I, I have like a pretty big irritation with most founder stories because they're so glossed up and they're not very real or accurate. Hmm. Um, so there's a way that I could tell this story in that version, but I'm going to choose not to because I love, I love this. Yeah. yeah. I just feel like there's, there's so much more to learn from like the real shit. And, you know, the more we try to gloss it up and like make our lives seem perfect, the more it alienates other people that are looking for inspiration. And I know that when I was growing up, I had a really hard time, like finding anyone's success story that I could relate to and that I could like see myself in. So I think I have to take you guys like where it really started was like my first attempt at starting a clothing line. I started a line of silk skirts and I called it Sudi skirts. It was very cute. (laughs) Um, And I like had my first e-commerce store and it didn't work. It like failed pretty immediately. I think I was like, I got like one stockist and I like sold one skirt on like day one and then like saw no sales for like what? How far um, back was this? So this was uh, 2015, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that actually doesn't seem like that long ago, but in like my memory, it feels like it was ages ago. Um, So that's where I kind of built up some skills of being like, okay, this is like how you might go about starting a clothing line. And even though like it wasn't a commercial success, I learned how to like work with a seamstress, you know do grading, like figure out patterns, go through production, you know, do sourcing of fabrics and all of those things. So that was always kind of in the back of my head. But then what happened was at the same time, I was like running brand social media and doing photography. And that was like really taking off at the time, as you guys know, like brands were really starting to take Instagram more seriously. um, And that was paying the bills. And it was like, that meant that I didn't have to go and get a nine to five job. So I I went with that. And then that ended up becoming an agency and studio media kind of got to a point of like being successful. And I had a couple employees and then I just like reached the state of being like, well, I'm not like super fulfilled. Like 
there are other things that I want to do. And I still kind of had it in the back of my head that I wanted to do like a product line. So I was really just like at this place of being like, okay, like what could I possibly do? Like, where is there white space in the market? What needs to exist that doesn't exist? And I was looking at different business ideas. Um, And underwear was something that came to me because I just hated my underwear. Like I just, I just had a really bad personal experience with my underwear and I would like talk about it with my friends and be like, like, what's this about? Like all of this lace and this synthetic shit and like the bows and the frills and just even like from a design perspective, also from like the way it's sold, like why are we going to La Senza or Victoria's Secret and like digging through buckets for like buying singles when like men can just buy like a bundle of the same boxers and just like wear the same boxers that they love every day. And for some reason, women were like, it's all about like the novelty and all of that. And I just really kind of hated that. Um, <laughs> and when I started doing the research, I learned a lot more about kind of this, the synthetics and why they're bad for you and kind of what needed to change. And I had had an experience of like a few years earlier of like recurring UTI infections. And I noticed during that time that synthetics would make the the symptoms like way worse. And if it was something like cotton that was breathable, I felt way better. So that really came into play when I was doing the research and actually like reading studies and realizing all the areas that underwear needed to change. So, okay. I want to, before I dive into the minerals and hoo-ha, I want to talk about the synthetics. Like what did you learn? And like, I think this is so overlooked and something not a lot of women are educated on. So can you kind of break it down for us? Yeah, it's super overlooked. And you know, there's some varying like views on this. Um, There's really like a lack of science around women's health and how it's related to underwear. But we all know, like when we go to our doctor with a yeast infection or a UTI infection or whatever, they're going to tell us to wear cotton. Um, And the reason that's important is because like natural fibers, just they breathe, they allow air to pass through the fibers And that means that it's not trapping like heat and moisture and creating like this perfect breeding ground for bacteria to grow. Um, So one of the earliest, earliest studies that I read was just looking at different, different uh, fabrics and the bacteria growth over like 24 hours. And I think if I'm remembering correctly, it was nylon, either nylon or polyester. That was like 2000 times the amount of bacteria over 24 hours compared to like cotton or tensile. Um, so, you know, when you're dealing with vaginas and pH balance, um, it's not ideal to have a lot of bacteria like E. coli and candida that's related to infection near your sensitive parts. Yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. (laughs) Hard pass. I know it's gross, but, (laughs) um, so break down what makes hoo-ha different, like what you did. I think it's so fascinating and it blows my mind that no one else was doing this. And I love that you really just disrupted the industry. So tell all our listeners. Yeah, there's, I think there's like a few different things. Probably the main thing is the fabrics we use. So we use a tensile that comes from like eucalyptus trees and modal that comes from beech trees. So they're both cellulose fabrics, which means they're breathable. They come from renewable renewable, uh, resources and the lining fabric is infused with zinc oxide. So zinc oxide is like, very healing it's like naturally antimicrobial um it wards off like bad smells it's absorb like it increases the absorption um and it's just like overall good for you it's actually like one of the most important minerals for like ph balance obviously when it's ingested but it has so many benefits just topically you know it's what you'll find in like baby cream and like anti-itch creams and things of that nature um So we stumbled upon that and I was like, yeah, that's, I think that could be a huge game changer. And then just from a design perspective, um, one of the things we did differently is like in most underwear, you have like a, maybe like a two inch like gusset lining. And for a lot of women, like that's not enough. It's not supportive enough. And it also creates this like really weird seam that like gapes open at the top which I just thought was like a really big design flaw that I couldn't, I couldn't really figure out why nobody had changed that. So we actually have like a, an industrial design pending on our lining because it's like the first truly full coverage lining in a thong. So it actually extends like up to the waistband and then all the way back to the tailbone. So it actually covers you back there as well. 
which I can attest to. It definitely does. And they're so, so comfy and soft. I'm obsessed with them. Yay. Um, when you talked about how like you started learning about minerals and how they keep our lady parts fresh, when you look back on that, was there a lot of research done or did you kind of have to like dig for that stuff? I had to dig pretty hard. Um, luckily, the patent holder of the fabric had already done like numerous, numerous studies. So it wasn't as though I was at a place of starting from zero um, because that would have been really challenging. There's just a lack of science in general when it comes to like feminine health and just women's health, which is really annoying. (laughs) So annoying. Yeah. But um, zinc oxide, you know, some people like a very small percentage of the population does have an, an allergic reaction to zinc oxide. And you would know that if you, you know, you usually would know that from like sunscreen. Um, but other than that, like it's used in a lot of fem care products. So there's a lot of amazing benefits for feminine wellness. Wait, I'm just, this wasn't on the outline, but I'm just so curious. What are like some of your favorite, um, female wellness, like not in the underwear category, but like outside like brands. Cause I feel like you've probably researched this so much and you've tried a bunch of different products. Like I'm curious, what are your favorites? Uh, I haven't tried too many personally, but I've like, I've done a a few like different collaborations with, you know, like for like giveaways and stuff. There's a brand called Intime, I believe it's pronounced. And they do like, it's like supplements. Um, There's another brand called Ucora, like U-Q-O-R-A. Yeah. Yeah, And they do like, it's for like UTIs. So highly recommend that. Um, We're probably going to be working on a collab for next year. Um, and then there's, what are some other ones? There's Lady Sweet. They have some really cute products. Um, and the founder is like super amazing. And what else? Least Shaved has like some cool, this is not really femme care, but like if you want a razor, that's not going to give you razor burn. <laughs> that's what Important. I need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to go buy one of those after. Um, so when you were testing samples, how many like, samples did you kind of go through with hoo-ha and then when when did you kind of start to see like the difference in like okay the zinc oxide material is like legit oh my gosh it was a really difficult process because the zinc oxide fabric isn't something that you can just buy um it's something you have to work with a mill to develop your own like custom blend that's going to work for your application and then you have to place an order of like your minimum quantity right so you can't just be like hey like send me two yards of like sample yardage so I can make some underwear and try it so unfortunately like I kind of had to take um a big kind of like roll of the dice with that but luckily it all really worked out um but I did you know start doing some sampling just locally like I just kept it really small to begin with and um I think I actually like sewed my first pair of underwear <laughs> it was good for you because I <laughs> another skill I did not get <laughs> no I, me neither trust me <laughs> um you would be shocked if you saw them but then I wish we could see it <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't even keep it it's like throw that out um but I found like a local seamstress slash like pattern maker and she I just would visit her and bring her ideas and she would make me some samples um it was definitely like I did not anticipate how many samples I would go through how many prototypes before I really nailed the design because one of the things that's so difficult with underwear is that it's like it's the area is just so sensitive so you like there's a lot of like seams and machinery that you just can't use on underwear. Like it has to be very specific. So you have to have like certain machines that can do certain stitches that don't like cause abrasion on the skin and things of that, that nature. So I probably went through at least a hundred prototypes before I landed on a design that not only like looked good, but also felt good. Like that was the biggest problem because I would wear it and be like, Oh, it's like rubbing me and it like doesn't feel good. So It was a really long process, but the Kickstarter was great. You know, it helped out and it allowed us to like just kind of test the market and make sure that there was some interest before we went and placed that order with the fabric factory and took the plunge. I feel like there's a lot of like, I have a lot of friends who think nothing will help them in these situations. Like I have friends who have chronic UTIs that you suffered from. So maybe if they're like a little bit skeptical on underwear, just helping fix that problem, what would you say to them? I mean... 
usually it's not the outcome of like one factor. So they're probably right. Like, it's not like we don't subscribe our un- or prescribe our underwear for any medical reasons. We're not going to say that our underwear is going to cure your yeast infection, but it's just one thing that you can change. That's easy to change. And then you can start looking at like the other areas of your life. What kinds of soaps are you using? What kinds of uh, detergents are you using? Um, what are you eating? Like, do you have enough minerals in your diet? And, you know, just kind of start to hopefully like cross some of those things off the list. The industry is so frustrating. We just get pushed. Women get pushed products on us all the time. They tell us that things are good for us. And I feel, I hear it from my friends all the freaking time and I hate it. And yeah. it's usually designed by a male. So, <laughs> <laughs> so true. Yeah. Most things are. Why? Why? I can't believe that. That makes me so annoyed. Anyway. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, okay, we always love yeah. asking our guests this question and our friendships love listening to it because it just keeps it so real. So what is some behind the scenes that we don't necessarily see on social media of hoo-ha? Mm, share a lot of my life on social media. Um, definitely a lot more sampling going on behind the scenes than you would realize. Um, we now have like a seamstress like, pattern maker that we work with that lives right in Vancouver and she visits us pretty often and she's very very skilled so that's definitely like sped up our ability to like create new styles which is frustratingly slow (laughs) um but yeah we don't really share like fittings you know we don't share too much about like the process of that and like the different iterations of like here's where like a prototype starts and like here's what it looks like on bodies and like different sizes and like having to adjust things here and there. We kind of try to keep that under wraps until it's at a place where like, we're pretty close to being able to produce it. Although we, like I have, you know, put on samples and like done like Instagram reels and stuff like that, just to be like, Hey, like, do you guys like this? Like what style do you like best? So there's a, you know, there's certain things that we kind of just keep, keep to ourselves because like it would be awkward if we were sharing like fit photos with our fit models, they probably wouldn't be too stoked about that. And then, I don't know, there's probably a lot of things that I don't share, like a lot of the weird, like financial things with running a product business and trying to figure out, trying to sift through data and figure out how to like purchase your next inventory and, you know, what you're going to sell the most of and where the hell all your money went and Mm -hmm. like all of these things involved in, in entrepreneurship that are like, I feel like that's relatable though. Yeah. Yeah, it's those things I think that like, obviously there's reasons we don't share them, but I think they always end up helping people, especially in startups and um, side hustles. So we just always love to ask that question. But what has been the biggest challenge for you in starting Hoo-Ha? Because how long has it been now? I mean, it depends on like when you count from. So I, I've been counting from the day we went live on our like e-commerce store, mm-hmm. which was May of this year. Um, but we did the Kickstarter like, last October um and then it was like a year of development before that so it's been a long time so I mean answer it however you want within that time frame like it's up to you but like what has been the biggest challenge would you say I mean you launched in the midst of a pandemic so like kudos to you (laughs) um but aside from that like what has been the biggest challenge and how did you pivot um (laughs) yeah launching during a pandemic was very scary very scary because you, I mean, I had planned to visit our factory and be there during production and I couldn't be because I couldn't travel. Um, And so you just like send a wire of like, let's say like $20,000 and you don't know these people. You've never met them in person. You know, you might have like some inspection reports and some certifications and like. Scariest thing. And it takes like, oh, and it takes like 10 business days to arrive. So you're just sitting there like, yeah. Okay. Where's yeah. my 20k? Yeah. yeah. So that was really scary. I I realized during that process that I like <laughs> I had a lot of personal work I needed to do with like trust and you know like not thinking everyone was out to get me because I just went through this like really dark period of being like oh my god like this isn't like I'm not going to get my stuff like where is it? And of course it was super delayed because they were like it was like factory shutdowns and like supply chain delays and stuff like that and I was just like oh my God, like these poor backers have been waiting like months to receive their underwear. Like, and I'm just like sending out updates. Like it's coming soon. Thank you so much for your patience. Um, And aside from that, I mean, I think a big challenge coming from a service background is understanding the finances. 
I considered myself going into this someone who's like pretty good with finances and can figure shit out and like plans for tax savings. And like, I've learned a lot of lessons through business. So I was like, oh, I've got this. But once you get your hands into product, there's so many different things that you need to account for that with service is just non-existent or way more straightforward. Um, like inventory costs, like marketing costs, like discounts you're giving and like shipping, you know, even just shipping to your customers, like it all really adds up and all of the different taxes that you need to save for from like all of the different provinces across Canada. And it's just, it's a lot more of like a beast from that perspective. Mm -hmm. So I've been working hard to like sit down, like look at my numbers, look at my profit and loss and like try to just understand where things are going. And to kind of piggyback off of that, when you look at your overall experience, because it's not your first time, you you said you had that that skirt business and then you had your studio media I think is what you called it what is like a tip a trick or a resource that has really helped you along the way um so just kind of with like thinking about like the financial thing one thing I did that I think has been a lifesaver is with my business bank account I create different accounts for different savings so I create an account for my tax savings GST, PST, and then like investment or just like regular savings and then like a checking account. And that way, like you should be looking at it like every month or every, at least every quarter so that at the end of the year, you're not hit up with like, oh, you owe the government 20 grand or oh, you owe like 15 grand in GST. Like if you're not planning for these things, you're just, it can put you in a really um, precarious spot. So I definitely recommend doing that. So when you started Hoo-Ha, from inception, you've always been very inclusive. And I want our listeners to know that this is before, obviously, I the movement. I mean, this has been going on for a long time, but like, it's just something before more people were doing it, you were really at the head of. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about how this played a part in Hoo-Ha's brand values? Yeah, 100%. I mean, I think like from the get-go, I wanted to make sure that all of our photography was very like untouched. So like aside from maybe spot correcting like some threads that are like sticking out or like something to do with the product, like I don't want to see any like Photoshopped butts. I don't want to see like, like I actually want to see like cellulite and stretch marks because ultimately I'm selling to women and women have these things. And I think you know, even though there's this perception that like a perfect image will sell better, I just kind of see it as like the more real it is, the more perfect it is. Um, and I think that just like plays a part in our messaging and how we talk to people. And, um, you know, unfortunately, like we weren't able to launch with all of the sizes. So there have been some people that have felt left out. And I apologize to those people. But we're working on it. Like we're launching our three XL, um, in the next, hopefully like three to four weeks. So definitely plan on like expanding the size, size range. That's amazing. What are some other values that you find really set the foundation for who outside of that inclusivity? Sustainability is a big one. Um, you know, it's like on the one hand, it can be really hard to be sustainable as a business because, you're relying on suppliers um, telling you the truth (laughs) about where things come from, number one, and also like doing the research. Um, But there are a lot of ways that you can be sustainable that are like really easy. You know, like you can just, instead of using like a plastic mailer, you can use a recycled craft mailer or like instead of using those like disgusting packing peanuts that like sit in landfills for hundreds of years, like they make cornstarch ones that are like maybe pennies more expensive. So that's a big one. And I think it's like most of the time it's pretty easy. So we talk about inclusivity a lot and just different topics on the podcast, but one thing we haven't talked about really is skinny shaming. And I know that you've shared your story. So I was just wondering if you can kind of share it with our listeners. Yeah. Um, this is a conversation that I feel like is bound to get me like canceled at some point. <laughs> it's important though. Like, I mean, it's, I get it. I mean, I haven't experienced it cause I'm a different body type, but like, I think we just have to lead with compassion, like for every single person. And I think until we do that, we're always going to be in such a problem. I agree. I totally agree. And I think like I grew up, I'm just a, I'm just a skinny person and I eat a lot and that's just my body type. And when I was younger, you know, when you're a young kid, like you don't, 
you're not like, Oh, I have, I'm skinny. So like, this is what everybody wants. And that makes me cool. Like you, you just, you're insecure no matter what, it doesn't matter what you look like. You're always going to be insecure when you're like a 10 year old kid, 12 year old kid, whatever. And so, you know, you, you just kind of feel out of place and like, you're not accepted. And I think, and there's this, <laughs> there's this weird thing where people will kind of assume that like, oh, you have the body type that for whatever reason, the media and society has decided is, you know, ideal and what people should strive towards, which I'm not saying it is at all. I think, you know, my opinion is that you should just love yourself no matter what you look like or what size you are. Like it does it truly doesn't matter. And like, nobody actually cares. So just like love and accept yourself no matter who you are. And that's like, what, like my team member asked me the other day, like what, like we were looking for models and she was like, what's the criteria for like a hoo-ha model? And I was like, literally the only criteria is that they're comfortable in their skin and they love the way they look. I love that. Because that translates, you know? And so I just think that like a lot of the time, you know, you get these comments and it's like every adult person knows that it's not okay to like shame someone who's of a certain size, but for some reason it doesn't always apply to the skinny girl. (laughs) Like, it's not necessarily very fair that like, that's okay to just, you know, like I've had in, even in professional settings, I've had people make comments about my body and it's just not, it's not okay. Like just let's not make that part of the equation. You know, what made you first decide to open up about it? Because I'm sure that was a very difficult decision. And then like, how did you really push past the discomfort to use your voice? I mean, I think it's just part of this, like, I want people to just stop living in this, like, fantasy world and start um, thinking a bit more about the reality. I think, like, with social media and with everything, like, people forget that there's always another side to something. And it's, like, appearances are very, very shallow. And there's always more going on in someone's life. And again, like, what you said, like, let's just all lead with a bit more compassion And I think this applies to the whole like skinny shaming message because I actually had this like really interesting conversation with my best friend who's like very, you know, her Tannis. She's like very knowledgeable with, she's a trainer. She's very knowledgeable with health and body composition. And we were talking about, I'm not a scientist, but we were talking about um, like the three main generalized uh, body types and I would be an ectomorph, which is someone who's like naturally lean and has a hard time putting on weight and like needs to eat more carbs. (laughs) But something that's really interesting about this is like each different body type has a different nervous system. And with like ectomorphs, there's like the parasympathetic nervous system and then the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is like your fight or flight. So it's what makes you feel like a lot of anxiety and fear. And then your parasympathetic is what calms you down and like takes away some of that stress and with ectomorphs they naturally have like super overactive sympathetic nervous systems and underactive parasympathetic nervous systems so they tend to be you know people who are really stressed out and anxious and like living in a fight or flight kind of mode and so when you look at that person and you're like oh they look like I wish I had that body well you can't have that body necessarily without a slew of other issues so like do you still want that? (laughs) Like, do you want all of the things that go with that? And that's just one way to look at life in general and desires in general. You know, people rarely look at the opposite side of things and consider that there's more to the picture than just what you see, like at a first glance. So well said. So interesting. I've never even heard of that before. I've never heard that term before. Yeah. I hope I said it all right. It's kind of technical, but I think I got it. I think I got it right. (laughs) Throughout uh, your journey, I guess, of like loving your body and accepting your size, is there something that has helped you become more confident in your body that maybe you can share with our listeners? It could be like a daily practice or a shift in perspective. Um, I think like journaling is super huge. Um, Gratitude, you know, just feeling grateful and just being like, just becoming self-aware. I think just like through meditation. I think other different people have different ways of getting there. Maybe it's working out or meditating or like listening to self-help books while you're like walking your dog. I don't know. 
Um, but just kind of like monitoring your own thoughts and being able to like, be like, Nope, I'm going to stop that one right there. Cause like, that's bullshit. I just feel like I've gotten to this point in my life where I know that if I'm having a thought and it's making me feel like really bad, I just know that that thought is bullshit because I think like the truth, even if sometimes the truth can hurt, like it never makes you feel like you want to like vomit, you know, like it, it shouldn't have that like weight to it. So before we kind of wrap up and let you escape us, um, what is your ultimate goal and message for women who choose to shop hoo-ha? Um, invest in yourself. Uh, you know, you invest in your husband and your boyfriend and you buy him sacks um, and you deserve to have better made, healthier undergarments too. These are your sensitive parts. These are your, like, this is your like fertility um, so invest in yourself, whether it's with us or whether it's just going like with a hundred percent, you know, cotton, just don't wear synthetics. <laughs> um, they're bad for you and they're, they're not good for the planet either. Um, and I just, you know, I, I want everyone to just, like I said, just love their body, love where they're at and just like, you know, stop wanting to be or look like anyone else and just like really own who you are and love who you are. Cause there's only one of you. And also when you choose to shop it, you're supporting a local small business, female founded. So like go shop you guys. Yes. You're supporting my dream. So thank you. <laughs> and sustainable. Yes. And sustainable. I do want to throw that out. Yes. There. And we do handwritten notes too. <laughs> um, okay. Last question. We might play a little game at the end just to spice things up, but okay. what is next for hoo-ha? Can you spill on any tea? Sorry. Yeah. Spill any tea on what's to come for 2021. Yeah. So we're launching our third style, which is like a high rise brief. It's super cute. Um, we're also, ex- love. yeah, we're also extending our size range, like I said, to three X. Um, and then next year, like later in the year, we're sampling some bralettes, which are like super cute. Uh, Ooh. I don't know exactly when those are going to be like production ready. Hopefully it'll be before the end of next year. Um, but we're another thing that I'm really excited, which I can't say too, too much about, but, um, we're working on like a game changing bodysuit design that uh, we have a patent on. So it's going to be, it's going to solve some serious design flaws with bodysuits. Oh, honestly, if it's anything as soft as your underwear, I cannot freaking wait. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> also, friends, Hoo has, I mean, I don't know if they're in stock right now, but you guys have face masks too, which have the same fabric. So, like, mask. Yeah, me. we actually just restocked yesterday. So we now have. I don't know when this podcast is coming out, but I'm sure we'll still have some. Um, we have like a two layer and then we also have a three layer and they both have the zinc lining. So it's great for like, if you suffer from um, like mask knee, it's just great to like cut down on the bacteria that gets trapped in the masks from your like breath and like the air. Um, and the three layer also has like a slot for a filter if you want like some extra protection. Amazing. Okay, we are going to wrap up with some rapid fire just to put you on the spot and keep things fun. Um, so I'll kick it off. What is your go-to cocktail or drink? Uh, red wine. What kind of red wine? <laughs> we want to get specific. Mm, I usually go for like a Malbec. Mm. I'm not specific on brands, but I, I like wine because it's like self-limiting. Like I can only have like one or two glasses and then I'm like ready to go to bed. I can have more than one or two glasses. Good for you. I think you might be a little younger, so give it a few years. Yeah, she is. <laughs> um, if you could travel to any place in the world right now, where would you go? Probably Europe, like Greece or Spain. Oh. Those are my favorites. Oh. Have you been to Greece? Yeah. Oh, I went two years ago and I saw a video on TikTok of it the other day and it just I wanted to cry. I know. I miss so it, traveling so much. Yeah, I, I really want to explore question. like some of the like lesser known islands. Like we went to the bigger islands, but I yeah. want to go to like Naxos and like some of like the oh, I went undiscovered. To Naxos. Ten really? or ten, ten or ten recommend. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, um, just having a moment over no, here. It's okay, I'm a- I'm Andy Cohen now because I haven't been to Greece. <laughs> <laughs> um, can't live without beauty product. Boy brow, Glossier. What is one thing you have on your bucket list right now? Uh, reach a million dollars in sales. You're going to do it. I can feel it. Thank you. Um, go to reality TV show. 
Um, I don't really watch reality TV. Okay, the TV show. We'll take reality out of it. TV show, Shit's Creek. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so good. So good. Now you guys are going to have a moment. Back to Andy Cohen <laughs> over here. <laughs> um, if someone was to play you in a movie, who would you pick? Someone was to play, okay, like an like I would pick an actress to play me. Yeah. Uh, Kira Knightley, just because I have a huge girl crush on her. <laughs> Not because I think I'm anything like her. <laughs> <laughs> um, celebrity crush. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio still. <laughs> Sorry. I know that's very <laughs> classic. Okay, I'm going to kick it off for the last one and what is your favorite go-to joke that's a hard one Why? i feel like everyone okay. has one um i have one from when i was like in thank you in grade one perfect <laughs> <laughs> bailey probably okay. knows it <laughs> probably what do you call stolen cheese stool and cheese stolen cheese <laughs> not oh no <laughs> I already I know the answer, but I'm gonna let you say it. Just uh, okay, nacho is, cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. On that oh, note, thank you so much for being here and spilling all the background info on hoo ha. You guys, I have hoo ha underwear. I swear by it. Check it out. But can you plug yourself where our listeners can find hoo ha? Where they can find you? Where they can find you on social and all that? Yeah, we hang out mostly on Instagram. So you can find me at Alexa Suter and you can find, oh, and Suter is one T. It's a common uh, mistake. And you can find hoo ha at where hoo ha, W E A R H U H A. And then your website is who hyphen ha.com. Yeah, who dash ha.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much. I think everybody's going to be like throwing out all of their stupid underwear and buying hoo ha. I hope so. <laughs> so thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here to chat. Okay, friends, thank you so much for listening to another episode, our last episode of 20 fucking 20. Um, But you know the drill. Please, please, please go subscribe. Leave us five stars. Rate and review. Follow us on the gram. What day is it podcast? It truly helps us so much. And, and, and today and tomorrow are the last days you can shop our merch 20% off plus our exclusive limited edition styles because after tomorrow Thursday January 31st January 31st what (laughs) December 31st 2020 (laughs) they're gone forever okay (laughs) <laughs> whoa that was with some power at the end there um other ways you can support us friendships join our facebook group what days at friendships follow along at what days at podcast um what else do we got bailey t- took my merch line how dare she but screenshot this episode send it to a friend um leave us a new review please bailey already said that hey alexa please subscribe to this podcast now there we go just had to throw that one in there um i think you forgot follow us on facebook or join our facebook group on On facebook Facebook. yeah i did i left that one out on purpose i gotta keep you guys on your toes and wondering when that line's gonna come up because it's not always gonna be every time and don't forget obviously follow us on social media we do all our updates there we do if you're this is your first episode or you're not already following us we do teasers we post all the links on our stories from each episode if there's an episode you listened to that's previously aired it's all saved to the highlights so really you should be following us thank you for listening friendships we will see you next what day is it wednesday <laughs>